Good Wednesday afternoon, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagis here with your Atlantic tropical update. Still talking about a tropical wave in the Atlantic Basin tagged Invest 97L. Investigative area 97 located in the Atlantic Basin, which is why the L is on the end of it. Today is August 10th, 2022. Let's look at by the numbers the season so far. Three named storms, Alex, Bonnie and Colin. Since Colin developed on July the 3rd, that's the last advisory round, it's the last instance that there was a named storm in the basin. It's been 38 days since we've had any activity out there at all in the basin. Been a long, dry spell. But from today onwards, kind of a benchmark day, August 10th. From this point on, typically when we look at climatology, 90% of all tropical development occurs after this date. So still a lot of season to go as we see the ramp up in activity that typically takes place through the second half of August, all of September, the peak on September the 10th, and still active through a good chunk of September, even into October. So even though it's been very quiet for the last several weeks and the season overall uneventful with only three tropical storms, we've got a long ways to go. And with climatology coming more in the line, we'll likely see things wake up. So here's a look at my storm tally so far. If we go through August 9th, from this season and all seasons passed up through that date, August 9th from yesterday. So three named storms, as you know, this season so far. This point last year, we already had five named storms, one hurricane. Something to note is that there have been no major hurricanes, at least from 2017 onwards, uh, up through August 9th. And that's not unusual because typically when we look at climatology, the first major hurricane occurs on around September 1st or so. But look at 2020 up through now. We had nine named storms already. Two of those uh, were hurricanes. But even that year, no major hurricanes until later in the season. All right, here's Invest 97L. Just as we're recording this, the Hurricane Center put out a brand new update on its development odd forecast. And they've lowered it. No surprise, because look at how ragged this wave looks. It is struggling to even have any semblance of organization at all. 10% chance now down from 20 within the next 48 hours, 20% chance down from 30% within the next five days. All major models have backed off of this developing at all as it tracks its way slowly off towards the west. What has changed? Well, pressure's gone up a little bit, meaning it's not strengthening. It's moving a little bit slower. Now it's 16 miles per hour, but it just can't take advantage of the warm sea surface temperatures we've got there. There was a moist environmental profile from the surface up to aloft, but that's being kind of intercepted by dry air being pulled into the circulation. And wind shear, although relatively light for the past few days, will kick up in the coming days. So the window for it to develop, I think, is, <coughs> is closing or is closed already. All right, here's a look at visible satellite imagery of Invest 97L. There's still a very broad spin in the atmosphere. Uh, but there's a lot of clear sky in there, too. There is just nothing organized at all. When we look at that water vapor now with dry air and moist air, moist air in the round where Invest 97L is, but just off to the west, northwest, you see this rust color. That's dry, low relative humidity values in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Not good uh, for this. All right, we talked about this yesterday. This is pretty cool. A change this season is that the hurricane hunters, well, NOAA in general here, is now flying missions out of the Cabo Verde Islands, which is a big change from seasons past when the farthest east they could set up shop and kind of forward deploy uh, was Barbados. So their area of um, operation only stretched out to maybe the central Atlantic. Now they can go all the way out into the eastern Atlantic and sample waves, flying aircraft through the waves as they come out off the coast of Africa. So this is a new mission that the G4 aircraft, the high altitude aircraft of NOAA, is flying right now in the upper levels in the round Invest 97L. Yesterday's mission, which was the first one into this system, that data was put into the models, and even that didn't really change the outcome. So overall environmental conditions just not, not conducive for this to develop. Something I haven't shown in a while either, this is something called relative vorticity, atmospheric spin. And what we're looking for here is a circular uh, concentrated area of spin. This is the spin associated with 97L, very broad, ragged, kind of elongated too. So it is not showing a signal there of organizing either. I want to show you a comparison of models now just to show you that there's not really anything that's going to happen with this wave as we go forward. The GFS and American, by the way, if you're wondering what these lines are, 
These are isobars, lines of equal pressure. So when you see a closed off center here, like, like here on the GFS, that's a closed center of circulation, a low pressure center. And when we have these bars, these isobars very close together, that's a tight pressure gradient, meaning a stronger system. Notice we're void of any of that here as we go out. It's an open wave, both models depicting as we go through the middle to end of the week. By the weekend, that open wave approaches the uh, leeward and windward islands. No strengthening expected there. There's a big area of high pressure driving this to the west, northwest. And then even farther out to the end of the weekend, early next week. I mean, nothing here. Still just an open wave, probably stretched out, dry air infiltrating it not developing. So factors to consider here, despite favorable conditions, warm sea surface temperatures, relatively conducive shear environment, the background state is unfavorable. And what I mean by that is that there is widespread sinking motion in the Atlantic Basin right now. Sinking motion because overall there's high pressure in control. Subsidence. We need rising motion for storms to gather, to strengthen, to develop, and organize. We really don't have that right now. Conditions only become more hostile for 97L in the days to come as it heads west. Higher shear environment, more dry air that it's going to run into. So it's already struggling to get its act together in conditions that are somewhat favorable. So not looking good forward. This system is unlikely to develop. You saw a 10, 20% chance of developing. Now I'm going to leave you with this. This is a satellite view of Africa looking at the African easterly waves. These are the seeds that come off of Africa enter the Atlantic Ocean, head into the main development region, and develop. And there is a wave train setting on up here. I have them all highlighted, and they stretch all the way across the continent and are pushing their way to the west. So things will heat up. In fact, the Climate Prediction Center puts out a two-week outlook. So week one shows no development odds. But week two, the time frame of April, August 17th through the 23rd, Moderate development odds in the main development region, I will tell you the long range models do hint at one of those African easterly waves hitting the Atlantic at a time when the environmental conditions are a little bit more conducive, we have a little more rising motion in place, that there could be something to watch as we head in that time frame. So keep that in mind. I'll leave you with that. All right, until next time, unless anything changes with 97L, this will be my last update on 97L. And then the next time you see me, there'll be another storm to talk about. So until then, you can find me on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and also on Twitter. Enjoy the rest of your day.